Hello and welcome to the Size Does Matter edition of Hillbilly DVD Reviews. Tonight we're going to be talking about the late and great 1998 blockbuster flick, Godzilla. Now there's been many Godzilla flicks over the years, but this was the first time actually American movie studio, you know, American filmmakers are going to tackle it, they're going to take it from Japan, they're going to readapt it, they're going to turn it into a brand new Godzilla that all of America would like because nobody, you know, in America wants Japanese shit, we want American shit, so they're going to make a whole new monster. Call it Godzilla, give it to us, and we're all gonna love it, right? This movie had like a year long marketing campaign that was non stop billboards, TV commercials, trailers, whatever you name it, cereal boxes, whatever the fuck, you name it, they had it. And it was all get you fucking prepared to go see Godzilla, goddammit. But then the movie opened and it was all downhill from there, basically. See, the story of this Godzilla is like a little iguana escapes from a pet store down in the Pay Polynesian Islands. It, you know, gets out in the ocean, the fucking the French government are testing nuclear bombs and shit. <laughs> they, 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 they drop it on this poor fucking iguana, it lays a bunch of eggs, and then like a whole new race of iguanas, I guess, get born. One of them growing up to be a big, big, big motherfucker. Really doesn't make any sense, kind of like Rob Zombie's Halloween remake, how all of a sudden, like this little tiny motherfucker grew up into like some eight foot tall son of a bitch. Basically what happens is cut to modern day, you know, 40 years later, however long they were dropping these bombs on these iguanas and shit. All of a sudden, next thing you know, fishing boats are getting taken out worldwide. Japanese fishing boats, Swedish fishing boats, fucking Canadian fishing boats, and eventually, we care as Americans because he, this motherfucker starts sacking American fishing boats. Why is he attacking only fishing boats? Because he wants to fish, god damn it. That, that's what this guy's a, he's all about the fish. He's all about the pussy, you know what I mean? So basically, we start getting introduced to our American characters, the whole worldwide phenomenon of fucking fish eater. <laughs> <laughs> it's attracting all kinds of like attention and shit. We got Matthew Broderick, he was a worm scientist. He specializes in worms that have nuclear drop bombs dropped on him. He's in Chernobyl. Fuck it, he don't care if he's gonna get canceled. He knows there's worms there that have fucking been affected by radiation. He's gonna dig them up, goddammit. Then back in New York, we get Harry Sher, who's a slimy ass, I don't know what, news anchor. And he's got this young girl working for him that he's just trying to fuck. He's like, you want to have a career? You got to go to fucking dinner with me. You got to go to bed with me. Whatever you fuck, you got to do. Like, come on, let's fuck. Turns out that girl that he's trying to fuck is actually the ex-girlfriend of the worm scientist, played by Matthew Broderick. Then, on top of this, we get the French motherfuckers start showing up to wear all the fishing boats. And played by... Uh, I always forget this fucking Jean Reno. Jean Reno, I love him, man. Fucking great from the professional. And he's great in this flick, too. I mean, why wouldn't he be great? And then, if that ain't enough, we got more characters. We got a mayor played by a Roger Ebert celebrity impersonator. And his assistant, his aide, is named uh, Siskel. So you got Siskel and Ebert. <laughs> <laughs> I guess director Roland Emmerich was really going to get back at some movie critics for trashing his previous film, Independence Day, aka ID4. And the way he was going to do this was he was going to cast uh, celebrity lookalikes of these uh, film critics and make them play politicians. Oh, <laughs> oh, that fucking Roland Emmerich, man. He's a brilliant one. He's got it up there. So basically, what happened is the government kids and I, fuck Ferris Bueller, Matthew Broderick, the, the earthworm scientist and shit. And he takes him, he's like, you're going to have to go to New York because this motherfucker just showed up. There's very cool fucking scenes of Godzilla walking through. And uh, like, it's like I said, Godzilla, he's like a giant iguana. And even though real life iguanas like dragged their tails, this was a time for some reason after Jurassic Park, a lot of real life scientists were saying that motherfuckers had like straight tails. So this Godzilla's just got a straight tail, it goes around, and it, re it really ain't on the rampage as far as like being angry and killing motherfuckers. He just got a big ass straight tail that's to strafe every fucking building around New York. So he crumbles the fucking city almost, and he starts hiding. This Godzilla, he's a little different. He's a fast Godzilla, he's like a skinny Godzilla, he can fit down in the sewers and shit. Kind of like a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Godzilla. So anyway, eventually, happenstance, you know, there's a lot of, there's like an hour and a half of just like nonsense. Uh, you know, the whole gang comes together. Fucking, you got Earthworm Scientist, you got his ex-girlfriend trying to be a reporter. Somehow fucking Hank Siri comes into the mix as a fucking, you know, cameraman. He's supposed to be the comic relief, even though he really don't tell that many jokes and shit. But hey, 
And then you get Frenchy, Jean Renault show up. And I have a hard, I'm sorry, like no offense to any people in France like watching this, but I have a hard time believing that France would have such guilt over nuking these iguana motherfuckers and making them grow up big and shit. The fact that John Renault's gonna make a strike team and he's gonna kidnap Ferris Bueller to be like, we gotta take down this motherfucker. Meanwhile, the whole American army is there. They can't do shit, man. They're shooting at this motherfucker. They, they probably wreck more of New York City than Godzilla does, pretty much. So it's going to take a small surgical strike team of Ferris Bueller, the professional, fucking the voice of the Quickie Mart guy from Simpsons, and this blonde chick, the one be reported, I don't, I, what was she in? I can't even name something else she was in. Uh, Maria uh, Patillo. But she's there, she's long for the ride. Maybe this was supposed to be her star making vehicle and just it didn't work out because a lot of people hate this movie and shit. So long story short, <laughs> they find out. Godzilla is hiding in Madison Square Garden where the New York Knicks play. So they go there, we're going to fucking go in there, drop some bombs and shit. You know, like the army and shit, they don't know what's going on. Only the small group of people do, they got to outwit Godzilla. But they get there, turns out Godzilla has fucking laid a million eggs. And when I say a million, I'm not exaggerating. Madison Square Garden as a basketball stadium, when you, if you want to go see the Knicks play a game, I think it seats like 24,000 people. But somehow Godzilla laid like 48,000 eggs in this motherfucker. And these eggs are giant, man. They're like fucking nine feet tall. And when the babies start coming out, uh, they're kind of like the last raptors from um, Jurassic Park, but they're much bigger, they're much meaner and shit. Too long of a fucking scene, this, this baby Godzilla shit going on to blow him up and shit. Meanwhile, by this point, the, you know, the, the big Godzilla is supposedly dead. He jumped out into a river and some submarines took him out. But, you know, wink, wink. We, we know this motherfucker ain't going. He's got to live to the end. So they blow up all the baby Godzillas. At this point, the movie's like 2 hours and 15 minutes. You're like, damn, this shit's long for a Godzilla movie. And it's like... Nope, some more. So Godzilla turns out he really wasn't dead. And that's another thing is Godzilla laid all these eggs, he had all these babies. So to me, this Godzilla is a, a woman, but they keep explaining what's the scientific bullshit over and over that no, it's really, I, I think they was afraid of pissing the fans off too much being like, no, we, we can't turn him into a girl. So it's a, it's a guy, but somehow he lays eggs. That's a girl Godzilla. That's a female Godzilla right there. And, and by the way, you already pissed off the fans by making him look like a fucking pet shop iguana and shit. So yeah, so at the end, there's one last chase scene. Godzilla going after him. They're driving in a New York cab. Fucking, he chews him up, spits him out. Next thing you know, whoosh, missiles come down on the bridge. Kill Godzilla and they play it like it's a real heart touching moment. Like this motherfucker never had a chance. He got bombs dropped on him. He grew real big. He had to eat all the fishing boats. He had to wreck New York City. He had to fucking burrow into the fucking basketball stadium shit. So, I mean, they really play it heavy handed. And this probably sounds like the most ridiculous. Like, geez, man, like overstuffed, too many characters, too fucking long for some simple shit about a monster that comes out of the, the fucking ocean and shit. And I gotta say, that's why it's fucking good. What really pissed people off in 1998, you know, myself, I was like, I wanted to see this movie, I was like, that ain't Godzilla, that's like fucking, I don't know what the fuck that thing is. But, 16 years have passed, whatever, there's a new Godzilla movie, if you really want to see a Godzilla, looks like Godzilla, I guess there's like 80 or 90 Japanese movies with a motherfucker in a rubber suit. So, I mean, like, there, to me, there ain't really no harm, they tried, it didn't go over with the public to make an American Godzilla. But as a movie, this movie's fucking fun, man. I had a lot of fun watching this shit. Like, it was Paul's pounding. Only real complaints is it's too long, about 20 minutes too long. Like, especially that that last Raptor scene. That shit just went on way too long. And, and the effects, man, the effects ain't, it's weird. It's hard for me to say. Some scenes, they're actually pretty fucking good. Some scenes, it looks like sci-fi channel shit, man. Like, the motherfuckers are walking, but they're, like, floating over the ground where they're supposed to be. And it's just, I don't know, it's just weird and shit. Bad CGI, rush CGI. But, overall, it's a fun movie. It just could have been better. With probably some better editing, some better special effects. Maybe some better comedy writers, I don't fucking know. As much as everybody, like, like hate this movie and shit... And that's the thing too, is like, I haven't seen this since the theater. And to put it in perspective, this happens to me a lot. When I watch movies from the 80s and 90s, I don't remember that good. Watching now, and it's like, damn, this movie's actually pretty good <laughs> compared to shit I'm used to watching now. So anybody who's like, just kicking this movie, hating this movie, whatever, and then going out to see Michael Bay Transformer movies, give me a fucking break. Rest for a while, all right? So Godzilla, watching again. Yeah, it ain't the real Godzilla, but still a cool fucking giant creature. Some good action scenes. I thought there was some funny shit a little bit. I didn't find it too, like, whatever. Maybe a little too long. I gotta give it a good review. I had a lot of fun with it. I'm gonna rate it as a movie 7.5 out of 10. 
Don't have a heart attack. <laughs> don't write me hate letters. I'm sorry, but I like the movie kind of. All right, picture and sound on this Blu-ray. This is, uh, there was actually two Blu-rays of Godzilla. One was just like a regular Blu-ray that had all the special features of the DVD that came out before. This is the new, came out a year ago, Mastered in 4K edition. Basically what this is, is it's just uh, remastered. You know, it's still regular 1080p Blu-ray shit, but they remastered it from a better quality master and shit. And also, they took all the special features off. So it's kind of, if you get this edition, it's kind of bad and it's kind of good. Took all the special features off. So they can make more room for the picture and sound, make it really good. The bit rates are really high compared, and maybe that's why it looks so good. The movie looks fucking great, but you know, and there is a lot of like rainy nighttime scenes. This movie's famous a lot of, I don't know, like somehow a dark rainstorm <laughs> hit New York just right when Godzilla hit, and it's so they could hide some of the CGI and shit. So the night scenes, I mean, they look good, but it's really the daytime scenes that look bad. The only shit that really looks bad in this movie, and I think it was a stylistic choice of the director was the French team with John Renaud, like, they're doing a lot of little stakeouts, like, in hotel rooms, hiding out and shit, smoking cigarettes, drinking coffee, and I think they was going for, like, a French, I don't know what, it, like, those scenes are really hazy and, like, overly, overly, like, grainy and stuff compared to the rest of the movie, so I think with those scenes, Roland Emmerich was going for, I don't know, a French, European film look and shit, but the rest of the movie is, is fucking good, you know, when they're walking around in the daytime and shit. The sound was fucking awesome, man. You know, the DTS HD Master Sound and shit. And I gotta say, I mean, like, yeah, you expect all the, like, boom, boom, when the Godzilla's walking in the street and the screams and shit be good. But really, like, it was just more the immersiveness of it, the rainstorms. They did a lot of, so, you know, surround sound activity with the rainstorm. I really felt, like, all cold and rainy when <laughs> I was watching this shit, actually. So, yeah, picture and sound, man, the Master in 4K edition ain't no joke. I could not imagine this thing looking any fucking better. Probably looks better than when you saw it in the theater in 1998 and hated the shit out of it. So, picture and sound, man, I got a rate super fucking high. I'm going to go 9 out of 10. All right, special features, uh, because like I said, this is the Master in 4K. It's kind of like the Super Bit Edition that they had on DVD where they stripped all the shit out and make it better. No special features. No, they made a new menu when you turn it on. It shows like a CGI street, like getting, I don't know, it's like all stompled and shit. But I don't count that as special feature. There ain't no trailer. There ain't nothing. No special feature. Special features, sorry, got to go 0 out of 10. All right, so that's it for Godzilla the Man. Probably, you know, depending on your age range of shit and how much you care about Godzilla, either you hate this or you just saw it one time, don't forget. Like, hey, man, don't hate on me for liking it. I liked it. I think it's a good fucking movie. It's the first big budget giant monster movie that would later on go on to pave the way for, you know what I mean, Transformers, Pacific Rim, and the new Godzilla and shit. So don't hate on it too much. It might not be a movie you like. But I'm telling you, it ain't really the biggest piece of shit the way everybody makes it out to be. So yeah, give it another chance. You've got room in your heart to give this fucking lizard a guano motherfucker so you know, one more spin and shit. Because I guarantee you it's going to be not nearly as bad as some of the bullshit that's going to be coming out later this summer.